Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show. We're delighted to have you uh, here with us today. Uh, you know, during these difficult times, it's obvious that everybody's talking about health. And uh, you know that I feel very strongly about not throwing out any any real, uh, you know, whack job theories about the pandemic specifically. But I think that we think about health now more than we uh, normally would. And uh, we are very, very fortunate to uh, to have uh, an individual who's worked in the health field for a very long time. I, uh, I, you know, I think that anything we can do to strengthen our immunity, to improve our health is uh, appreciated. What Threw me for a loop, and I've been reading this on and off for quite some time, and I've been trying to get this gentleman on the show for a long time now, because this threw for, threw me for a loop about maybe six months ago when I read it yeah. for the first time. Sure, that gum, actual gum, chewing, gum, chewing gum, really, actually can uh, can can help your uh, improve your health. And huh. look, I'm not giving any theories here, but uh, we are we're very pleased. We've been trying to get this doctor on for a long time. I'm uh, I, I always have trouble with the last name. I've got Dr. Jonathan. Jonathan, please forgive me. I'm having a little difficulty <laughs> pronouncing your last name. Uh, I, I I just I, I have trouble with it, and I I know you don't want me to introduce you with the improper last name. So could you give us your your last name, Dr. Jonathan? Uh, a lot of vowels in it. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but your your last name, sir. Lama. <laughs> Dr. Lama. Dr. Jonathan Lama. Dr. I'm not Lama. quite sure why you had trouble with it. I mean, it's fairly simple. I, I, <laughs> you know what? Uh, it's the American University Education Doctor. Um, uh, so this is, uh, I know you were, uh, your people were very, very careful to let us know that, that you do not consider this any kind of cure for current situations with this pandemic no. that's going on. But you yeah. have espoused the be the benefits of uh, gum for for a long time, and uh, you know I, I, your book uh, "Get the Gum Out" is is uh, you know is, is something that I think I, I'm excited about. Where did you first get? Uh, when did you first get interested in gum, uh, chewing gum, as far as something for with health benefits? Well, uh, well, I was at uh, the University of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, <laughs> I was studying uh, many uh, snack related. Uh, cures to uh, mm -hmm. various diseases around the world. Right. And uh, one night as I was working late in the lab, I was chewing uh, some gum and I realized as I was chewing gum, I was actually getting more air to my brain. And that was uh, stimulating my brain and making me think more. And I thought, you know, you know what's interesting? I've studied diseases all around the world. Right. People get sick all around the world. Mm -hmm. But the ones who survive, and I, I'm surprised no one has ever brought this up, the ones who survive are the ones who keep breathing. That is the secret of getting over that. You must keep breathing. So mm. what I found is chewing gum, it opens up your mouth, it expands your lungs and keeps you breathing. Gives It exercises the lungs. It exercises the uh, passage from the mouth uh, into your lungs so you can keep breathing so you can keep living. It's fairly simple, and yet the scientific community has uh, fought this. They have ridiculed me. Ah. I, I, I know you're frustrated about that. Yeah, I know. Sad. I didn't realize the physiological activity of uh, chewing the gum was what you were going with. I thought perhaps the gum itself had a property. So this is any gum, any gum at all could uh, could work for this, right? I, I, but I think maybe the harder gums, like actual bubble gum, would probably help your situation. Why do you think you've been so mocked in the scientific community about this? Seems like a relatively logical theory. I know I'm, I'm, you know. People give me garbage about it a little bit online occasionally. Why do you think you've been so mocked? Well, here's the thing. The scientific community is so wrapped up in facts. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. They don't believe in letting people just think outside the box and maybe fudge some um, data here and there. But you don't need facts. You just need to keep breathing, which... Brings us back to chewing gum. Chewing gum right. will help you breathe, right. will help you. I've done a study. Over 59% oh. of the people that I have put on a strict 
um, chewing gum diet, so to speak, <laughs> has lived. Totally 59, lived. And are 59%? still living. 59%? 100% across the board, they're all still alive. Wow. Rob, I, wow. I, I'd appreciate you tone, you know, tone down the, the tone here. Keep an I'm open sorry. mind. I'm sorry. Well, um, you know, Mike, it's counterpoint. You have to have it. I understand. Are there any, uh, we, I don't, I hate to use the term celebrities, but are there any people that we would know that uh, are offering any support during what has obviously been, uh, from this interview, a difficult time for you? Uh, I know it's tough. When, and, and people don't like new theories. People don't like things to come out and uh, they, they just get frustrated with that. Is there anybody, uh, a name that we might know that has uh, backed up your theory of gum? Uh, Jay Leno has come out. Um, we found that people with strong jaw lines uh, tend to really support um, this whole uh, theory. So uh, Jay Leno um, right now is the only one. Just Jay? <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, we are not doing any more than that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and scene. Colin Mockery. <laughs> that was a... a it's a little, just a you know, a, a little sixty-one-year-old boy's dream came true just then with Abel. That's so great. And uh, I asked uh, Colin, I said, "Can I just throw anything out at you?" And that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting there. I didn't even drink last night when I said, uh, "Wouldn't it be fun to do this with the, with the fact that we've got you on a uh, Zoom?" And uh, ladies and gentlemen, from whose line is it anyway? Colin Mockery. Yeah. I'm going to get right to the plug since you were so generous. Uh, Colin uh, Mockery and Brad Sherwood are going to be doing a live improv via Zoom called. Dream, uh, clever there, of consciousness, <laughs> and uh, that is uh, that is coming up. Uh, Rob, do you have the dates for that? It's going to be August 14th? It's tomorrow. Right. It's tomorrow, tomorrow, and you can find the show at PassportShows.com. And a few days after that, too. They're doing it uh, multiple nights, so uh, it's going to be starting tomorrow. Slash portfolio slash stream dash of dash consciousness. It's a long uh, slug line, but we will have it on our social media so you can click through and enjoy it tomorrow and whenever you get a chance to do it. So thank you for excited. indulging my uh, my selfishness to uh, to say I said if I'm going to have uh, one of the great improv uh, actors of the world on my show, I might as well throw that out at you. And I thought you'd enjoy that, too. First thing in the morning. Thank you. I'm here to make dreams come true, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I'm glad I could help fulfill that little wish for you. <laughs> uh, right, right when you joined us here a moment ago before we went on the air, your backdrop. Yes. Your backdrop. There are uh, there there are a lot of back I, I study backdrops like we all do now when we're watching. Sure. I watch a lot of news and the talking heads, and there, there are certain ones that, uh, you know, I just have to say to Jonathan Lumiere of the Associated Press, please come on, tweak it up. I'm tired of looking at Jason Veritek and the Red Sox picture in the corner. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's that's quite a backdrop. You uh, uh, did you handpick that one for, or do you use that every I time you do that. an interview? I thought uh, when you have a lot of books in the background, people just assume you're smart. So I thought um, you know that would help me in a lot of interviews I've had to do. You know. You know, at times I had that has worked against me where people have asked me questions that I don't know the answer to, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm still going to go with it. Uh, it's wonderful. Well, it's great having you on the show. And, uh, you know, you and Brad uh, keeping the uh, the fire burning with this. This is uh, have you tried anything like this yet? Uh, technologically, people that are in the business of show have to uh, try different outlets. So this right. is brand new. And I want to urge uh, really this is this is keeping this kind of stuff going. And all of our listeners, I think this could be a really, really good time to sit back with an adult beverage and watch these guys just riff for a uh, for a solid hour have you done anything similar to this at all well we've done um when it, when it first started uh you know the the pandemic um yeah i did some improv shows on online with various uh companies around um the states and then brad and i decided well you know let's try and get our tour virtual so we don't actually have to go anywhere or and truly not wear pants because uh, <laughs> it's been a dream that we haven't been able to do in our stage show. Uh, so we've been, uh, it, it's been, it's been, it's odd because he's in Vegas, I'm uh, in Toronto. So we're in two different countries working together using a technology we don't fully trust or understand. So it's, it's been uh, exciting. We had sort of a preview show last night with uh, friends and family and it went quite well. So we were awesome. We're, we're happy. I mean, it's so weird doing a you know a comedy show, and you hear 
no laughter. There's yeah, nothing. weird. Yeah, mm-hmm. we get that I a lot to, here. I wanted to ask you, uh, being a Canadian, and and what is the deal with the Canadians and comedy? God, uh, just on and on and Mike, on. Mike, it's a ruse to people. distract us to distract us from the invasion. The invasion of the United <laughs> States. I don't know where I saw the car. I don't. I don't know where I saw the cartoon of uh, uh, the Canadian border, and there, there, there's a person holding up a a barrier, and you see the Confederate flag and these guns and people with truckers hats that trying to get into Canada. Do you have any? As far as the mood, I don't. You don't need to represent your entire country. Do you have any feeling of superiority being uh, in a country <laughs> that that has their act together? And uh, meanwhile, where we're dying down here, Colin, do you feel a little superior up in uh, the Great White North? Oh, sure, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the short answer. I, you know, the long answer is, of course, I have a lot of. Um, wonderful friends in uh, the U.S. I I love the U.S. There's so many, um, you know, New York is one of my favorite uh, cities. Um, I work there a lot and I've been lucky enough to travel across the whole country and and meet a lot of people. So, um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad that our uh, government sort of, uh, you know, there were still a few problems, but we sort of got it under control fairly quickly and um, being responsible. It's just, uh, I, f- uh, what? I, I don't even know what the emotion is I feel for you guys. It's not pity, because that just seems condescending. I feel mm-hmm. you've sort of, you're in a hostage situation. Wow, that, yeah. You know, that's not uh, inaccurate. When I when I think of, a, I have a, uh, I'm up here in, uh, uh, relatively close to Canada. Uh, we're about an hour and a half from the border up here in Maine, but I uh, my primary residence is down in uh, South Florida. And I think hostage would be relatively accurate as far as the way when you have people that aren't doing things that uh, you necessarily not only disagree with, but you feel could put you at peril. It's a very weird world to uh, live in. And there's a lot of that. We'll have that in uh, the news later on this morning. Uh, The Sturgis rally. I got a story from there. It's going to occur here. Uh, So this is exciting for you and, uh, and for Brad and uh, to do improv, the actual idea of the Zoom, I think we kind of proved it. If I can do it with uh, Colin, I think the the pros can do it. Of course, uh, it, it's it's the it, it doesn't not lend itself to being able to do an improv uh, in the Zoom format. And and you test drove it last night, seemed to work okay for you. Yeah, because uh, we decided uh, fairly early. We've been working on this for like a month, trying different platforms and different ways of doing it and we found um we were trying to do our stage show on zoom which doesn't translate because we're when we're on stage we can take a lot more time yeah um you know setting up things zoom is like television so we have to keep the audience uh, we have to keep our bits faster and shorter because audiences tend to use zoom it's they're watching a screen it's like television you know right you can so we, we actually figured out a way to make the technology our friend, and we've used uh, it to do kind of some special effects that we're kind of excited about. And it, it sort <laughs> you of, just got uh, me with that. You just got me yeah, with that it, one a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, it made me laugh when we when we opened up. We talked about the fabulous background that you have, your virtual library background. Do you use virtual backgrounds to help set the scene is that one of the variants oh, that you can don't use? let him give away his yeah, secrets my god special <laughs> effects mike <laughs> special effects yeah, right now. Cool. Uh, agree we have um we have a scene where we actually have um our audience the theater gets uh, in touch with them and says send uh send them all your you know holiday pictures or uh paintings oh, wow that you're- Done. And we we do scenes based on on those showing up, which we see for the first time as we're doing it. So it's it's still fun creatively, and it's really keeping us on our toes. Oh, that is fantastic! Listen, Colin and Brad are going to be doing this show. It is uh, stream of consciousness. Uh, it's a long link here: passportshows dot com backslash portfolio backslash stream dash of dash consciousness forward slash i give that to you if you want to write it down but we will have a link at mikeomerashow.com uh for this show so you can go and uh, check it out tomorrow night it's going to be a lot of fun as far as the improvs go um this is a weird question and i have no idea why i'm asking but it popped into my head being as good at it as you are Ha, have you in the in your entire history and it doesn't have to be your history of performing it could be when you were a kid 
Do you ever just pull that crap when you're out there in a store or something like or you're on the phone <laughs> right. with a you know somebody who's uh you know trying to sell you something telemarketer yeah you know or perhaps like I did and I really did this I did this a couple of times in college with a buddy I remember where you kind of uh, create a different persona I might get you arrested but I'm curious about yeah. that yeah no <laughs> I uh, my oddly enough uh my improv skills in my life suck. I've never won an argument with my wife. Uh, I've never talked myself out of a, a speeding ticket. It just doesn't work for me. Uh, my, my wife, Deb, actually calls the guy on whose line the other because it's <laughs> okay. he's not like me at all. I tend to be quiet, try to stay in a shell, try to stay out of people's way. <laughs> As opposed to the laugh whore who is on whose line. <laughs> now, when you're not being the other, do you think the reason you're quiet is because you're, you know, if it's not your your bread and butter, if it's not your job, are you observing? Are you absorbing? Why do you think it is that the other is the other? Yeah, I think I, I certainly uh, observe a lot. I'm a, a great listener. I, I when we were shooting the the show in uh, Britain, I just love going to pubs and just listening to people talk and telling their stories and watching them. I I, I'm a, I love people watching, and it's all stuff that you can use. Even though um, something like you'll be doing a scene, and then something will pop up where you go, "Oh, where'd that come from? Oh, yeah, it was that guy that I met in uh, New York who was spitting at me." It's just. <laughs> it's just Everything you experience, all the, you know, goes into this vault in your head, and it just comes out at the uh, best times or the worst times, depending on how you look at it. Are you a bad liar? Uh, it depends. Uh, okay. With my wife, yeah, horrible liar. I don't know why. I just start sweating, even when I'm telling the truth. So <laughs> that's not good. But uh, I have too. gotten away with uh, uh, lies in other areas. <laughs> And, uh, you know, besides doing uh, the show, I'll uh, give you a chance to plug your partner here. What's Brad been up to? Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes when I'm giving oh, you the obvious setup, what's Brad been up to in his uh, spare, in his spare come, time? Brad Mike, Sherwood. Here, here comes the lie. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, Brad's been uh, waiting for me to get this back happening so he can ride my coattails to success. There it is. There it Perfect. is, Brad Perfect. Sherwood. Uh, well, listen, I want to make sure that uh, everybody checks it out. It is uh, good. The link will be up on our website for yes, the, uh, the, the live place. show. I like that you did a test drive on it. That's kind of cool. And I love the idea of playing with the uh, the backgrounds. And uh, and thank you for committing uh, during the uh, the gum segment. I really uh, I appreciate that. Dr. Colin. Jonathan Lama. Yeah, I think <laughs> that, Kevin, that was. And by Kevin. the way, that's what makes him great. That's why if you go and uh, by the way I you, know, you can you can see Colin uh and the history of, uh, of he's got a highlight reel from uh from whose line is it oh, anyway great. and I think look it, I'm not you've been told this before you were the go-to guy you were the one that got them all but that's because your mind works in that way not in a million years did I expect llama when you uh, when yeah. you threw that out at me with that but uh you, you know keep on keeping on and uh, if you like the if you loved whose line is it as anyway you're going to love this show with Colin Mockery and Brad Sherwood that uh, comes up starting tomorrow night, and then there are several nights after after that. Uh, not not all uh, consecutively, but uh, you can check them out as well. Really, thank you so much, and I wish you nothing but the best of luck. I hope you that Rob can follow up with you to see if uh, if this show was a resounding success because we we'd love to have you back on and do it again anytime, anytime. Oh, we'd love to. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for having me on. That's how Colin Mockery, everybody. Thank nice you. Round of Be applause. safe, Colin. There he goes. Thank you very you much. Too. Very good. That's Colin, everybody, and uh, Rob Spiewak. We can start the show. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. You can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Mike O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. All right, Rob, you're going to have to tell me what I missed because you did Moonstruck, a clip yes. from um, Johnny Camareri in Moonstruck, yes. and then you, in the middle of it, segued into Joe Pesci after he uh, beats to almost beats to death Billy Bats, who will right. later be found thumping in the trunk and stabbed and shot to death and finally thrown 
in a pit and covered with lime. I'm not sure I uh, understand the combination. Mike, it is so clear. I don't understand why you didn't get it. Those are both great Italian-themed movies that have scenes with knives. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we're playing Brian Adams right now. Cuts like a knife. You see, you, had like to, you needed the knife yeah, to get, get the hoof, the paw. I don't mind that. And also, I don't mind that at all. Bring me the big knife. <laughs> bring me the big knife. You understand, <laughs> sweetie? Sweetie? Uh, anyway, uh, live from the Podcast Village studios in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., this is the Mike O'Mara Show. We're heard all the way from Beargrass, North Carolina, Myersville, Maryland, Fort Bolivar, Texas, Ruckersville, Virginia, Central South Carolina, and Islamabad, Pakistan. Uh, the Mike O'Mara Show is on now and brought to you by Cornerstone First Financial. If your mortgage is 3.25% or higher, uh, you need to call my friend Mark Livingstone at Cornerstone First Financial and you need you need to do it today. Do it. See, it's exciting and you get, you know, you get verklempt. Uh, right now, 90% of homeowners have rates higher than the average going interest rate. Cornerstone First Financial's rates are so low that they've actually become a disruptor in the industry uh, because their rate service and programs are unparalleled. Their low rate guarantee and the fact that they are both a lender and a broker allows them to have the flexibility to approve loans that the big banks can't. Interest rates on the 30-year fixed have fallen into the twos for the first time ever you never know with uh, the world and the goings on how long that's going to last. You Gotta need to call my friend Mark Livingstone at Cornerstone First Financial now, 202 625 1221. That's 202 625 1221 or online at cornerstonefirst.com. Think of this at this level, you'll likely never need to refinance again. So whether it's a purchase or refi, 202 625 1221 or cornerstonefirst.com, Cornerstone First Financial. Personal attention from application to closing and I was thinking about Colin and uh, laughing at Jay Leno. <laughs> it's so great. Oh my god. That was just fun. That is fun is the best thing to have. What a great thing to have a job where I'm up here in the great state of Maine I know. and I can do an improv with a guy where you know it doesn't matter. I didn't throw him a fastball obviously no. but boy oh boy to do that with him. That's a little ego stroke for oh, me. Of course and I got it the is. idea last night and then uh because of my inability to text you last night, I've had, I'm getting texts three days after somebody sends them to me up here. You and I do okay on text, right. but my text messages suck ass up here. They are terrible. I think you up have here. trouble outside of the Apple family. When someone who is not on iOS yeah. gets okay. involved, it that, really that, mires since, it. Since we, since we do the group text, yeah. Uh, well, we've got Maddie right here. Maddie. Maddie. <laughs> Maciello. She's a good a girl. Daughter of the mayor. Uh, are you an iPhone person? I Maddie? am, of course. Yeah. Like There's a only person. one. Only there one person is. in the group, Mike. Only one person in the group God who doesn't have damn an iPhone. Pony. Suck it. <laughs> you know what? How many times do you complain about your crappy iPhone? You hate it. You're always but complaining. You're, but Mike. you're you 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 are the reason that this isn't working. No, that's crazy talk. I I I, I disagree. What, are, what is your phone? What is your? Tell us about what is your? Is it a Samsung Galaxy? Samsung Galaxy Note Ten, and it's wonderful. Ten. It doesn't catch on fire. It's big. It has a pen. I love it. But, you, but you're the weak link. You're why I, <laughs> I sent the group text out, and I can't do them, and I, and it's frustrating for me because up here it doesn't seem to – What it, Rob and I communicate via text directly, and right. we don't have a problem with it. When I send the group text to the group, that screen turns green Mur that tells me from the, from the Apple company someone's not using an Apple product. Mm. It's right. very frustrating. Mm -hmm. I blame Apple. I think they're, they're purposefully I blame the, making I blame me the pen. Bad. That's a stupid thing to have as a pen. You know what it's called? It's called the S Pen. It's the yeah, worst it pen, pen I've ever heard. Yeah. By the way, the S Pen, doesn't that go back to like the friggin' Palm Pilot? I was back say, in the day, exactly. like 30 years ago or something like that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's still fun, you know? It works. Why, why change it? Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Know. You know, Mike, uh, when you brought up Jay Leno, it reminded me of something. I know that sometimes I feel unfortunately targeted because of my television viewing. Like, I know that because you watch golf, you get a lot of insurance ads that come your way also yeah there's a lot of uh, skewing older ads during uh, game shows like jeopardy at night mm -hmm. they skew older well because hbo did that reboot of perry mason i've been watching 
classic Perry Masons occasionally. Is that? And, see, I didn't understand your text. I didn't know who you were talking about. You, you'll reference a character that was uh, was that are, are the characters you're giving me? Oh, hope? Paul Drake. He is the, the private investigator. But we're in the eighth season now, and he's and is all Paul the, Drake, the new Perry Mason guy. Is that well, who it is? Th- no, well, there's he's on both Perry Masons, but by different actors. I'm referring to all the right. old Perry Mason. I don't know but, if you have a friend out there or a coworker. I don't that you can communicate with that would track with your. Uh, you know, referencing a character actor from a 1904 television well, show. I was really, I, I thought that you would appreciate the fact that by the time they got to season eight, Raymond Burr was really fat, but he wasn't owning up to it. But the reason I say this, they ran a commercial during Perry Mason that is obviously skewed towards the older demographic. Do you know that Norton, the computer security company, they've got Jay Leno in a spot claiming that someone tried to steal his identity. He said, <laughs> Jay Leno said, someone filed for my social security benefits before I did. And I thought this was really unexpected because I thought I was pretty well known. And Jay so, Leno, because Jay Leno really needs those social security benefits. All I do is I only spend the stand-up money. I saved all the Tonight Show money. But it's so funny because it's a really, you know, like, do you worry about having your identity stolen? And, you know, there's some old woman at home with a jitterbug saying, yes, I worry about that. Let me listen. And it says, do you know who had his identity stolen? Yeah, it's me, Jay Leno. And they tried to steal my identity. All right, <laughs> Maddie, let like, me give you this. Let me give you this. Okay, okay. so here, here's what happens here. Let me get them standing. By. Okay, there they are. So okay. here's, what, here's what I get from Rob. Uh, this is a couple of nights ago when right. Rob and I are having an exchange about uh, something. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was about getting was. your sister on the show. Yeah. All right. The text for me. All right. Mm-hmm. I said, uh, uh, thanks. Texts for me are tough unless uh, iPhone to iPhone. And then mm-hmm. capital letters, pony. <laughs> <laughs> Rob writes, sad tram- trombone. I'll text you directly next time. Uh, by the way, and this is where, you know, where I start looking out the window. By the way, I'm watching a season eight episode of Perry Mason and Raymond Burr weighs about 7,000 pounds. I don't get that. I re- I don't understand. Necessary I, I mean, information I just, to have. Uh, well, then I do. Know. I do. Uh, uh, I used to do a bit that longtime listeners of the Don and Mike Show will understand this exchange. Yes. I write, I write to Rob, wrapped in foil. Maddie, exactly. I don't expect you to understand that. Mm-hmm. Rob Sounds writes funny. Pe- Rob writes peanut, and then I write <laughs> Phil Harris. Rob was doing a riff on. Uh, on Biden Harris when he named Kamala, Kamala Harris as his running mate, and uh, who was the Harris that I, you I wanted? I put up to use? Ed Harris because I found oh, it I did, really I, did, funny. I did see those. I was confused. That was yes. funny. I was trying because I'm. This is where I am computer illiterate. I was trying to get a picture of the late dead uh, singer Phil Harris, who was Baloo in <laughs> yes. the Jungle Book. You know, yes, of Look course. For the bare necessities. You know that guy, yes, right, Maddie? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, This is good. This disciplines me, having Maddie on screen. I'm I actually find myself trying to explain. This is probably helpful to get younger <laughs> listeners to listen to this show. Exactly. So exactly. I put Phil Harris on, on the thread, and then I said, tomorrow, I give him a little tease, tomorrow, a meteor shower with a seven-year-old. Kill me. Just kill me. Night, night. <laughs> and then Rob writes, I hate meteors. Good night. Paul Drake looks like he's on prednisone. <laughs> I don't know, and I don't even respond. I don't, I don't bother I responding because yeah, I don't know who Paul point. Drake is. I've never known who Paul Drake is. Was Paul Drake, let me see if I, you, this might make you happy. Was right. Paul Drake like kind of a gray haired investigator? Yes. He was the All private right. investigator that would usually come in with the, the clutch piece of evidence about five don't minutes before encouraged. the end of the episode. Don't get excited about that. I just happen you to You just that said one. that what I'm about to say might excite me, and yes. Mike, it excited me. Uh, it's uh, yeah. All right. So you watch. I thought you were watching the modern Perry Mason. Well, I've which watched is, all of that. I've watched all okay. of that, but it inspired me to go back and look at some of the older ones. And That's I've realized that the structure of it is horrible because Perry Mason doesn't show up until 25 minutes in too much exposition. Not good how writing. Come, get how come I get pony? How come I get pony so perfectly right before the show? Like at eight twenty eight, when you say Rob is hooked up and looking solid, that's a our connection that we're talking about. Maybe it about has that. to do. Maybe he can text you, but you can't text him. Uh, no, but that's right, in Pony, the group text. Pony, say, uh, uh, put Hi Mike in and text me right now. We will do an experiment on the show. Text right. Hi Mike and go. Send it to me right now. Tell me when you've sent it. And it's gone. That's all. 
Didn't that take longer than it needed to as far as for Well, I mean, it was six it. letters and a space. <laughs> I got it. Look, I got it. Okay. That's, that's within 15 seconds. Huh. All right. Now you Correct. do a group text reply, hi, pony. And then we'll see. Yeah, I, I already it got it. Shut up. You did not. Stop it. <laughs> All right, I just sent a word out to everybody. Okay. <laughs> I hope it's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You'll like the word. All right. If it ever gets here. Oh, I see ah. it. You get it, Maddie? I did. What does it say? It says Rob with two Bs. Okay. Hey, I just got it, it too. Forget All right, so, uh, you know what? God damn it. It's like when you take your, co- your exactly. car into a mechanic mm, and it, and it yeah. doesn't work. What Unless we need to do is in the mechanic or whatever I was trying to we say. We need That's to right. investigate this. Someone call Paul Drake. <laughs> so did you like the new Perry Mason that's on HBO? Very, very much. I thought the writing was exceptional and a great plot arc. The thing is, oh, and I wanted to tell you about this. If you haven't watched it, you should catch up twice. I guess spoiler alert, okay, because it's like five episodes ago. John Lithgow plays an older attorney in Perry Mason, and he kills himself in, I think, episode three. But twice in the episode, the new Perry Mason does a John Lithgow impression as the character, like you do for the uh, the soup commercial. When he's But he does an impression of John Lithgow. It's very, very funny, and I thought you would appreciate that. So you really should. It's only eight episodes, I think. You should stay with Perry Mason. It's a good um, storytelling. I, I'm looking for something. I'm. Uh, it, it's weird when you get uh, bored uh, with Netflix, but I am. I mean, I'm talking about. Do, do, I, I, am I alone when you just sit there and you scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and you get trending, continue watching new releases, and they bleed together. Where <laughs> Once the new you get releases, past that, it's bad. The, yeah. Well, the new releases and the trending. Uh, look, I'm not going to slam the most successful entertainment company to come uh, uh, around for the last decade as far as TV Mm -hmm. is concerned. Netflix is killing it. They're killing it with their Emmy nominations. There's been great content on Netflix. But there's so much stuff that we... It's just like when back in the day, and I'm old enough to remember, when we got new channels and then cable came in and then hundreds of choices. And that there's so much out there that you just get bored. I almost pine for the day where we were more limited and there were less offerings. That's why you would have a juggernaut like uh, a show like the Mary Tyler Moore show mm-hmm. or where you would have appointment television that all of us could talk about where now that's once every few years where you've got something like Breaking Bad that, that, but that even strikes then, the it's national not, consciousness. Even though they have that, that's a great show and that's appointment television, it's still not the same because people are watching it at different rates and at different times. What really unified us entertainment wise was pre DVR pre VCR when a show was on television you had to watch it that night at eight o'clock and then the next day at the water cooler you were talking to everybody about it because TV shows would have 42 45 shares back in the day that means mm-hmm. like half the country watched it and, and it was and I you think don't now do it anymore we could certainly man could we use something like that when you're talking about not uh i'm watching a news story where somebody references how bad the red sox are playing and right. i have no idea and i know i think the capitals played a playoff game yesterday i i don't even know i don't they even did. know the I results they, i believe they lost because the national or even the regional co- you know uh what's the word i'm looking for the reg- regional cohesion of people doing something at the same time just mm-hmm. doesn't that's another chalk that up to another screwed up thing with the pandemic so last night i'm going and going and going and i'm making an effort i said you're not you, no one's there to recommend it by the way the recommendations over the years that i've gotten for streaming shows and shows of any kind have been fantastic and i've latched on to shows and there's nothing better when you know you've got a friend that you can sit in front of the warm television and watch uh, one of your stories it's a great feeling yes what were you gonna say capitals fell to the islanders four to two last night and that puts the islanders one zero in the uh, playoff uh, rows all right i you know what i meant to do that it was three o'clock yesterday afternoon yeah, an afternoon uh, game another, right mm-hmm. yeah yeah on a, on a tuesday on a wednesday damn it yeah so uh getting back to what i was saying uh, so i'm surfing and surfing and surfing and surfing and finally i come to <laughs> yes a show called kingdom is anybody aware of it? It's I think brand Shannon, new. It, it, was that the one Shannon was talking about the other day? It has like Nick Jonas in it. No, no. no I think uh, because if Nick Jonas because Mike in this, loves well, just, just anything, do wait for Nick Jonas. <laughs> anything with the Jonas Brothers is all Mike. Maybe not. So it says it's season two, so it's been out there. 
Uh, hold on. I'm going to go to the official site on Netflix.com. Uh, no. Kingdom. This is a mm. uh, Kingdom is an Asian program. Uh, while strange rumors about their ill king grip a kingdom, the crown <laughs> prince becomes their only hope against a mysterious plague overtaking the land. Now, I didn't read okay. the bio. I didn't see it, but it seemed, if I if I saw that, I am not a... Uh, I am not a Walking Dead fan. I'm somebody that that likes history, and I love a good true story that's dramatized. I like it in my books, and I like it in my television. But it's this ancient, uh, weird kingdom in Asia. Is it rooted in fact or mythology? Not at all. Okay. Well, I, 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 I thought maybe it might be until uh, no, because right at the beginning there. I, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. There's okay. this uh, doctor or servant for the the king of mm-hmm. this uh, this Asian country, and he says to his little minion, they're walking in with these, uh, I think, food or medicine or something like that. Sure. She says, don't, whatever you do, do not look, and I shouldn't do the Asian accent. So no. Get in trouble for that. Whatever you do, do not look into the king's bedchamber. And what does the little guy do? Well, of course, uh, he looks you hear, in. You got to. Well, they walk in and they're putting stuff down in front of this screen that apparently is screening over his bed. And you hear, like oh no! That. And then he looks up, and of course, he's yanked into the bedchamber, and you hear screaming. That's how it starts. Oh. I didn't know that it was a monster sci-fi type of thing. And now oh, they I tricked do. you. They tricked so, you. Yeah, but I didn't really confirm it until maybe two thirds of the show when. Right. Uh, <laughs> They're treating people that have this illness and they're making soup. And this lady comes back from the field and she sees this soup that has been really like had bugs in it and it's just nothing good and there's nothing really to eat and they're cooking straw and they're trying to make a broth out of it. Ew. And all of a sudden she walks back into the courtyard of this hospital and the people are all smiling and laughing and they're eating they're eating meat. And uh, and they said, where did they get the meat? Well, the guy says, I killed a deer. And so she goes over and she stirs the soup. And the uh, the aroma of the soup comes up. And they're cooking real meat in the soup. And she's, oh, that's wonderful. And she scoops out a, a little bowl of it. And the human finger falls out. Oh, I'm spoiling the whole show for anybody right there. And no, you realize not really. you're making me not want to watch it. <laughs> yeah. You're saving you me. What you're doing. He's cooked a he's cooked a human being in there. And then flash forward. I'm just taking you up to the point where I bailed. OK, where I bailed on it. And I'm like, OK, you know that they're starving and perhaps he, a little cannibalism just to save the people. And then later that night. Uh, when they're putting them, uh, they're sleeping and she's treating one person. And he goes, <laughs> and suddenly they become <laughs> like zombies uh, wanting to eat human flesh. And I so went, you thank you, you very much. Will you, you know. return? F no. <laughs> I mean, it's like, don't we have enough about zombie? My kid, first of all, my son is terrified of zombies. When he crawls into our bed in the middle of the night, I tell him every night there's no such thing as a zombie. He said, I'm afraid of zombies. It's a seven-year-old thing where you're afraid sure. of the dark and you're afraid of zombies. But, you know, zombies for me uh, have never... The Walking Dead, after you get the first uh, phenomenal makeup, uh, doesn't do it. Are you a Walking Dead fan, Maddie? No, no, not at all. Yeah, I'm not into zombies or really anything like sci-fi-y, really. So yeah, I don't like the, the sci-fi board. What about a Nick me. Jonas zombie? Well, then I'm all in. He can yeah, sure. make me a zombie, too. What <laughs> show did Nick Jonas do that had Kingdom in it? There was I no I Kingdom. Feel like, well, because Shannon was raving about this show, and she wanted me to watch it, and I feel like it was called... Um, you know what? I'm going to look it up. But I think it was called Kingdom, and it was like MMA fighters. It was. It was. I just saw there's two different Kingdoms on it's Netflix. It's called Kingdom, though? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Isn't the Nick Jonas one getting some pretty good reviews, though? Probably. Isn't that, I mean, I haven't I mean, I heard like good Jonas. things about that. Stop I'm not sure. He could do yeah. no wrong. Uh, right, he can well. do wrong. He can do plenty of wrong. <laughs> Why don't All you the like Jonas Nick Jonas? Brothers right. oh, the Jonas Brothers are just, uh, I think they are uh, successful. Very- Young, yes. thin, everything you're not? Is that what Well, it is? you see the thing, well, if Oscar was here, he'd be all in. Oh, I love the Jonas Brothers. They're great. They're successful. But no, you know, I, don't I don't love them, f- but I mean, they're, they, they, they're they, they kind I of... I hate uh, them. The, well, it, <laughs> like, you don't have not, to do that. I don't have to hate them. I, I don't... Uh, and is he... Is Nick the only one that's an actor? 
Um, for the most part, yeah, and I think the other two. Well, Kevin is just like a nobody, right? Well, and yeah. Then, well, Nick always seems like the most proactive one. Yeah, the bossy one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Even though he's the youngest, I know way you know too much more, about this. You know more that right there. You demonstrated you know more about the Jonas well, Brothers than I do. There was there was a Jonas Brothers, uh, a slight Jonas Brothers era in this household <laughs> because of my daughter. There was even a concert attendant. All right, so that's it. That that works. Uh, yeah, you know, that's cool. Uh, but uh, you know, don't hate, Rob. There's no okay. need for hate on this show. We don't have. I would like it. Great what? show Go if you ahead. could cook Kevin Jonas. I'm okay, watching. Thank you. thank you very much. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more. Uh, I'm going to go through the, the lineup and see if anything hits. And I mean, Maddie, Rob, well, not Rob. Rob watches Mark's Brothers. God, we, you know, you know what we're going to do when we come back? <laughs> we're going to get to you, finally okay. you, and what I need from you, what I'm going to require from you going forward in life. All Not right. that it's a big deal. Uh, we'll take a break and, uh, and come back with more on the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Harry's. It arrived yesterday. Finally! My care package from home, where I had sent my Harry's to the wrong address, and I've got it. And uh, and by the way, the great communication that I have with my wife, it arrived when I wasn't here. And uh, I went up into the bathroom today, and there they were, my Harry's razors. And I yelled downstairs, and I said, did I get the care package yesterday? And from downstairs, I go, I hear, uh-huh. <laughs> Thanks, Carla. Uh, anyway, let me tell you about nice Harry's. Surprise, uh, though, huh? Yeah, well, it's great to. I love the product. Uh, Harry's, we're talking about. You could save enough to buy twenty six fancy cups of coffee in New York City. Yes. New York City, fancy coffee, <laughs> or uh, even enough to pay for six months of your Netflix subscription, which See? we were just talking about. There you go. How you ask? It's because Harry's delivers high quality razor blades for as low as two bucks each. That is a fraction of the price of the leading brand. But even more importantly than that, the, the incredible savings are great, but the shaving is fantastic. Yes. Harry's gives a better shave, the best shave of my life. I love the product. I, I don't know how long. I've never experimented because I don't choose to with how long you could go. But I I really don't have, uh, I, I suppose if you have the beard of a uh, goat, Maybe you oh, wouldn't go William the full Stowell, year. But I, think, yeah. I think I could do a year with a Harry's razor. I have I, I think never. I, could do it. I had, the only reason I ever change out my Harry's razor is because I think it's probably about time. It's not because That's of it. performance. I'm, I'm with you on that one completely. Uh, blade refills delivered directly to your door on your schedule, with or without a subscription. 100% quality guarantee. One percent of proceeds are set aside for nonprofit organizations devoted to helping provide access to better health care for men and veterans. And these razors last. Our listeners can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com slash TMOS. You'll get the weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip, five-blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel with aloe to keep your skin hydrated, and a travel blade cover to protect your razor. Go to harrys.com slash TMOS to start shaving better too. Day. And uh, I do want to plug Colin Mockery again, where his improv show will be uh, linked uh, at MikeOmeraShow.com. Also uh, on our Facebook page and yeah. on our uh, fan club page. Make sure you check it out because you know what? This is a great way to support the arts in a time when the arts are floundering. I love the fact that he is making this effort to keep improv alive because he's the best at it. Absolutely. So uh, check him out. So getting back to uh, you, I was going to say somebody give me a Netflix uh, recommendation and people do it all the time. Uh, let me look at the uh, Netflix originals. And then I want to talk to you about uh, your right. hermit lifestyle yeah. uh, and not getting out of the house, uh, which, uh, you know, it's, been, it's come to my attention that that's the way uh, you you live your life. And uh, and I think you need to it doesn't necessarily have to be getting out of the house, but we'll get to that in All just right. a second. All right. Uh, the Umbrella Academy. That's getting a, a lot of heat on that. Uh, anyone? Anyone watch the, anybody I've aware of it? I've heard good things, but I haven't seen it yet. I saw season right. one. It's kind of uh, kind of like Watchmen, a little bit funnier. It's, it, it's kind of crude at times, but it, it's enjoyable. All right. That thumbs was up or thumbs down. You know what? Stirring thumbs endorsement. Sideways. That was about, that is as non-committal an endorsement as I've ever heard. I mean, heard it's a non-committal program. In my program. natural life, right there. You give it what? A thumbs up? I give it. I, I give it a fifty percent. It's really. It's not. That's spectacular. way to go. Then I don't need to hear from you then about that if you don't let. But I thank you for volunteering. But fifty percent. You probably consume more Netflix content than anybody, right? Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Um. You know what? Have you seen Marco Polo? 
I have not seen Marco. That's Polo. fantastic. It's it's very much like Kingdom only without zombies, and it's historic and uh, much more enjoyable. I've watched it. It's right. about a bunch of kids in a swimming pool, and one of them has their eyes shut. <laughs> and I like the Marco me. Polo insurance commercial. I do like that one. Yeah, you'll see Marco one. Polo where he's like with a llama in back of him. <laughs> Sorry, that's one I like. Hey, that's here's one I almost went to last night: Selling Sunset. Has anybody watched Selling Sunset? Never Anyone? heard of it. No one has. Pony? It's a it's about realtors that are selling high dollar real estate in oh. California. In oh, so Los is, it a, Angeles, is it a documentary or is it scripted? I don't know. Don't, okay. I, I, that's why I'm asking because I didn't. Uh, I didn't click on it. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Reality TV. We don't need that. Crime TV dramas. Uh, uh, my daughter loves Peaky Blinders. Uh, I've watched Narcos, but uh, here we go. New releases. Uh, right. The Kissing Booth. Anyone? Oh, I, it's a terrible, like, you. it's a teenage movie that is so bad, it's almost good. Really? That helps. <laughs> like, you, like, don't watch it. It's really not worth it, but, it, like, okay. it's so bad. Is it as bad uh, as the reality TV we used to watch at lunchtime? Um, it's, it's bad, but in a different way. It's not, okay. like, trashy. But it's okay, just, it's bad. just badly done. The, okay. the old guard, the old guard. Anyone watching the old guard? So uh, I think it might be a movie. Charlize Theron is uh, in the old guard. Might have to check that one out. Anyone? Nope. Well, no, but I, she's no. worth watching no matter what. Okay, thank you. Thank <laughs> Am you, I right, thank ladies? You. Yeah. All right. All right, all right. No. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Lady. Uh, I'm not, t- Fuller House, I'm not going to do. I've no. recommended this one, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich, if you really yes. want to know mm-hmm. what really went on and why we were so excited when uh, Gislin Lane name, whatever that name is, got uh, right. locked yeah. up. And as she's bitching now about, uh, she thinks she's being watched in uh, prison by people that are not part of the prison system, which may or may not be the case. I don't know, but she's got, uh, she's on 24 hour surveillance. Yeah. They've taken her well, off suicide watch, though. I follow well, this closely because I want to see her. I really, really want to see her get uh, get the maximum mm-hmm. sentences for sure. uh, what they did. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Ranch. Anybody watching The oh, Ranch? I love The Ranch. The it's, Ranch. We found one. <laughs> okay, what go. is The Ranch? You might not like it. Stop. It's very weird, and I wouldn't have thought that I would have liked it, but it's about it's Ashton Kutcher and um, oh, Sam I'm Elliott. Oh, I'm so sorry, Maddie. I okay. I've read about this. I've read about I, this. Yeah. It's, it's, did you say Ashton Kutcher and Sam Elliott? Yeah, yeah. Sam Elliott's the dad, Ooh. and they live on a ranch in Colorado and it's super redneck which I um, can't relate well, to. Well I like it's, super it's redneck. So I'm a redneck. Yeah, it's, a... it's fun. But it has a laugh track which I hate. But other than that it's good. Oh, yeah. Really? It, there's hits and misses in it. Yeah. All right. Is, uh, I think it's isn't it partially improv I, I don't like, know. Like not totally Maybe. but uh, Ashton Kutcher you know what for a successful skinny good looking guy I like him. Not Nick Jonas. Oh good. But yes Ashton Kutcher I like him. I yeah. recommended uh, Immigration Nation before. We'll just do a few yes. more of these here. Uh, orange, the, that's everybody knows Orange is the New Black. Dead to Me, uh, we've, we've burned through that one already. Yes. That's a uh, good one. Uh, let me see. Uh, we've got another, they love Kingdoms. A, a show like Begins another Kingdom. Yeah. There's The Last Kingdom. I don't want to watch that. Uh, let's see. Sweet Magnolias. Anyone? Sweet Magnolias. Oops. It sounds like a wonderful <laughs> show. Six Underground. Mm-hmm. Anybody? Six Underground. See what I'm up against here? You Nobody know, it's, knows this. the thing is, is that you see someone that will be complaining on Facebook, and I'm seeing a lot of this now that we're into this pandemic so deep. They said, I've seen all the things. Now, I hate that phrase, but it's so easy because once you get past the, the total cream, the stuff that's trending on, on Netflix, there's so much garbage in there. Mm-hmm. There's so much filler. And you don't know if you want to waste your time on it. Bonnie, are you still watching Black Mirror? Uh, yeah, a little bit. It, it, they haven't done all that many episodes. I feel like the British shows tend to just do like six episodes a season and then you don't see anything from them for like a year or two. Yeah, because they're can lazy. We all agree, can we all agree that Space Force was a complete bust? A complete not a complete bust. Not a complete bust. Of course you liked it because <laughs> it had Steve Carell in it. Is that no, it? I, I liked I just thought it, I had, it had a funny, uh, funny tone to it. But they didn't go strong enough in any direction it wasn't too silly it wasn't too funny it wasn't right. too critical but it wasn't a total bust it should have been anybody w- before we stop this anything that jumps out that i should check anything from from this group and now i get a lot of emails so that's good i like that when i get those as far as people letting me know that pony anyone you you gave me yeah. bloodline years ago i remember i'll never forget that i love that show got addicted to it i still think about that show i liked it so much My, i've know? got a question have you ever watched no pony Bl- ask the oh, pony sorry. thing come on come all on right, you're gonna this will disappoint this will take some ritalin all right what <laughs> Have you, have you seen the the modern Sherlock that was on BBC? It, it's on Netflix right now. I, I don't know if it's, it's the one with the uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. No, I have not it's seen fantastic. that. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. 
All right, this that's good. I, I might, I, I can deal with the Brits. I might look at, and I love that name. I love his dirty little name, Benedict Cumberbatch. That's not I dirty. I really like that. And what were you going to say, Rob Spiewak? I was going to say, if you have never watched it, you really should go back and at least watch the first season of Arrested Development. It is a show. Now, don't, don't scowl. Don't no, scowl. I second no. that. Like, we'll come back and talk to you about <laughs> you. I want to I live in the now. I want to live in the, I want something brand new and shiny. That's what I want. Do you, All do, right. Can I, shiny can and I, disappointing. That's good. Uh, whatever. Uh, we'll take a break. Come back with more on the Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show brought to you by Freshly. We've all spent a lot of time at home in the past few months. A lot. Too much. And they say that a lot, Demo. And at first, it was kind of fun cooking at home. Well, now, if you're like me, it, it, gets, uh, it gets burned. And, of course. Uh, it, you, you, yeah, sometimes you just have other stuff you want to do, and uh, enough with the you know with the cooking. Uh, how about freshly? Freshly's yes. fantastic. Freshly understands that food needs to be delicious, healthy, and simple. Right, 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 mm-hmm. right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. Uh, with freshly, you can avoid the grocery store and enjoy fully prepared dinners delivered fresh, not frozen, right to your door. Freshly chefs and nutritionists do all the hard work. All you do is heat for three minutes, and dinner is done. And I know, as a person that loves his calories, uh, that I need to monitor my healthy foods. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. And also, when it's easy, it's easy. Uh, It's fantastic. Choose a plan that works for you. Take a break from all that cooking. It's too hot anyway. Freshly has what you want every time. You're going to love Freshly. Join the almost 1.5 million satisfied Freshly customers and skip the shopping, the prepping, the cooking, and the cleanup. Freshly is offering our listeners $40 off their first two orders at Freshly.com slash TMOS. Don't wait. That's Freshly.com slash TMOS. Uh, we only have time for a short break. For all the people that send in letters to Rob, I'm going to start uh, getting back on the stick uh, with a uh, Tuesday reading of that. Uh, we will do the, the mailbag tomorrow. I promise right. you. I am sorry because I know... I really respect the people that take the time to write us letters and send stuff in uh, and send it to Rob with two B's at MikeOmeraShow.com. We've got a fun one tomorrow. You're going to like it. It's good stuff. I had it in my hand for three days. I've had this, and I have not been doing my job. Sometimes when uh, we are one down, I uh, overcompensate, and so I get off on a tangent and do different stuff, so I apologize for that. We will do that next Tuesday, so if you're looking to hear your letter and you think you might get it in there, we uh, we will do that for you this coming Friday Perfect. on the show. Uh, as far as you are concerned, I it has come to my attention that that you uh, you, you don't outside of prepping for this show, outside of uh, doing some things around the house, that you are not uh, getting out and doing anything, and you are kind of hermit like, yeah, staying in your home was, too much. It was brought to my attention within the uh, family unit that uh, perhaps I am using the COVID nineteen as an excuse to remain sort of, uh, you know, isolated and not doing anything. Okay. And uh, maybe that so is true. Did, this comes from your wife. You know that. We've had your wife on the show, and she talks yes, about it. Yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> she talks about it. She's, But I like the fact that she, it, Carrie has no filter, and it's kind of cool because it's, she adds that, and I encourage oh, it her. it is cool. I well, I, I you know it make it makes it sizzle. I you, know. You can't. I know. You can't. For from a, I can't look. The one thing I know for that's the irrefutable truth. I in no way can tell you to live your life, uh, how to live your life. When Maddie Massiello takes a trip to the beach and comes back and says, "This happened. This happened." You know, for the agoraphobics out there. You right. know, when you leave your house, stuff occasionally happens. Yep. This happens is true. to me all the time. So when you're not leaving your house and you're talking about the best example is every day on the show with Oscar and Rob, I will say, I got this. What's this? And usually it's stuff that's going on in our lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When Rob Sp- Spiewak's biggest thing in the last week and what he brought to me was that he reorganized his record collection. Oh, this when is it's so much more is, than that. It's so much more uh, no, than that. Not though. to me, it isn't, but we, we can maybe talk about it another time. But I have to tell you, when you are bringing that to the table of mm-hmm. something that's major happening in your life, you are someone who needs to interact with other human beings in it's some not capacity. The time, but it's not the time of our lifetime that we want to be interacting with other people. Because uh, even if it's like, driving it's around in your car mm-hmm. and observing, uh, you because you leave the house, you go to the store, you come back, you call your mom and dad, and that's pretty much it. Is that yeah, uh, it is. Would that be accurate? According to Dr. Fauci, I'm doing it right. 
<laughs> You're gonna use? Are you hiding behind? Are you hiding behind the pandemic? And you know what? It's, uh, it's, I say this? that I say that tongue firmly in cheek because actually. I have been uh, with raised voice told that you're not doing anything and you're hiding behind the pandemic. You're a hermit and it's not healthy and it's not right and it's not good. Are and you maybe, afraid? Are you afraid to go yes, outside? I am. I try, I try to avoid it at all costs. But you go to the Costco. I haven't been to Costco in probably three weeks. Oh, I, I, I don't go. I don't go out unless I have to. <laughs> But you know, I used to be a twice a week guy there. And when I go there, I am loath to go there. I hate it. I, right. you know, with the masks and the, and the gloves and the are and you, people are looking and it's just, it, why put yourself in a situation for, for example, Maddie, bless you when you went home and you put the face shield on and all the layers of stuff mm -hmm. on the airplane. I thought that is, you know, that's the way to do it. But is it worth the risk to do it? Well, is it? at her age, probably. You know, maybe, uh, maybe you not, she doesn't have the same fear factor that maybe you and I have about this particular and me more than you. But I mean, as I, just but statistically, I, mean, I know. But, you know, we're very close. We're almost in the same age range. We're almost there. We're within a few years of each other. Ten, I guess. By the uh, way, 11. I had a forgetful moment yesterday when uh, Carla and Michael and I went into town and we came back and we filled the car up at the local uh, grocery up here, the, the local right. one. The mean yeah. grocery store. I remember. We're small. We have nothing mean. I said, Carly, go in and get a 12-pack of Diet Coke. And they only had Pepsi. I brought two cans. I said, they don't even have a six-pack? Nope. I said, ah, way to go, mean. And, the, and they, ought to, they ought to power wash their gas pumps, too. It was oh, gross. gross. Oh. You got to clean up around there occasionally. Anyway, mm. so I go in, and it was one of the first moments in a long time where I was standing in front of the counter to go back in because their pump uh, scanner, their credit card scanner is broken. That's another thing about this place. Of yeah. course it is. So you have to go back in, and Carla said, go in and make sure we paid. And I go back, and it was one of those rare times I forgot the mask. I walked into a place of business without the mask, and I had this oh, little boy. moment there like that. But yeah. the, but getting out is uh, and interacting and judging, having people piss you off, running into a situation where you see people, just having that inter. I think with a mask on, you could do something like that. You know, you would, what have you done in the last month? Nothing. <laughs> nothing i've done nothing and it's uh, you know what when it's the thing is i wish i could defend it somehow on a on a on a, on a rational thing but there is a deep-seated fear and a notion of, of dying self-preservation self i mean why shouldn't i be afraid i'm an older man prone to asthma i'm obese i shouldn't you're be not a, older i'm older you're not older how I, old I'll, are you you're 48 I'll, right i'll be 50 in march that's older. That's how well I'm in tune with people. In the you're gonna have the big five zero in March. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, we, and, we might have to. We might have to tailor a show to that. If, yeah. If we're out of the it'll woods be called with that, remembering Rob Spiewak will be the name of the show. No. We the, 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 if we the next time we we actually see people might be the Rob Tacular. Oh, that would be fun, wouldn't it? I would it'll design a, the entire show around you. A spectacular. A spectacular. A spectacular. <laughs> That would be fine. But I think so. Yeah, I understand. But you're not as, you know, that's not statistically you're not there. Pre-existing, you, you know, your lungs haven't been great for. No, they're horrible. Time. They're horrible. I'm prone to uh, pneumonia. I'm prone to asthma. Um, I take medication on a daily Sorry basis. For laughing it's that. funny. I it is great, Mike. You love the fact that in the morning when I take my pills, I'm no longer hungry for breakfast <laughs> because that's how many pills I take. But I have um, blown off. Uh, <laughs> Is that an elephant sound? Oh, this made me laugh when you <laughs> like grabbed a breath right. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I uh, have blown off a funeral that I would have loved to have gone to because that's of respect. Smart. That's uh, smart. I don't. I'd, I'd blow off a funeral right now. My godson had his virtual wedding last weekend, and they'd had a thing, you know, where you could socially distance and and attend. And it was my godson, and I didn't go, and yeah. I feel bad about it. But I feel like I'm but making see, the wise group choice. Gatherings are not cool. I'm with you on that. What I do is I still will go through a drive-through window. I will still go into a store with a mask. I will still oh, I go went to out. A, I and, went to a drive-through last Friday. I did, as a matter of fact. Yes, I went to so Roy Rogers. Oh, you're, you're hopeless. <laughs> you're so bad. What did you get at the Roy Rogers? 
Mike, if you even have to ask, you don't know Roy Rogers. A Did double the, R bar uh, burger. A uh, double R bar burger. All right, because, congratulations. Because, Maddie, it's the great taste of cheeseburger made better with ham. Oh, that sounds oh. great. And a heart attack waiting to happen. I, well, yeah, I, I, but I won't, the Maddie, COVID won't get me. The heart will. Yeah. Maddie, what are we going to do with them? I have no idea. I, I don't know. Don't. I don't it's, know. It's uh, frustrating. But uh, yeah, no, nobody's more frustrated than Mrs. Spiewak. I know that for sure. This is true. Uh, and that's take been for her, years. Take her to an outdoor cafe. Take her just to an outdoor cafe. Mm -hmm. I'll pay. If I did it, I don't want you to pay. And if I did it, I'd be the world's biggest hypocrite because I'm the one that yells, why do you need to go to restaurants? This is why rates are up. Don't push your luck. Oh, no. I I think occasionally if you can sit outside and social distance, you can get away with it. That's where I relax some of my guidelines with that. All right. right. You don't go go over to the tourist trap over in Bar Harbor where 50 people are crammed into an ice cream parlor. I don't care if you've got masks. But sitting at a cafe, socially distancing and watching people walk by on the sidewalk. It's, it's, it'll help you. It'll help the old noggin, the inner government. It'll do well for you. I don't know. I've never, felt more, I've never felt more mentally sane in my life than All this right, very you. moment. Very good. We'll take a break, and uh, he's a uh, lost cause. We'll, uh, we'll talk to uh, you with news you may not need. Coming up on the Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome back to the Mike <laughs> O'Mara Show, brought to you by the TMOS Patron Society. So sad, I almost don't want to tell you, but... Oh, no, really? Uh, I got a Facebook message this morning from a man who uh, saw Oscar last night. Oh. He and Shannon and Santos were uh, set up in a tent city in Cape Cod eating oh. discarded radishes for supper. That's sad. So bad. Oh, Oscar, we hated a firearm, but times are bad. Uh, but you've been generous. If you want Oscar back, we need a little more. If you can do that, you might have him back by Monday. We're not sure. Uh, but it's the TMOS Patron Society. Please. Please join. We need you to go there. One, five, uh, ten dollars a week or any amount. Uh, one-time donation doesn't matter. Anything can help. Uh, because if you're there for us, we'll be here for you. Your support means the world to us now more than ever. We appreciate you and we thank you. Keep a stiff upper lip, Oscar. The best is yet to come. <laughs> News. News. Boo. At this point, everyone wants to uh, have this nasty little pandemic over. But, uh, well, I I seem now to read a story whenever it comes across my desk about Matthew McConaughey. Oh, he's great. But uh, Matthew McConaughey said uh, it's important to recognize the positive effect this is having. Uh, He said, quote, I think my mental health and family life are improving. I spend more time in the kitchen with my family, preparing meals, eating meals, cooking with my kids. It's been one big advantage, uh, the forced family time. (laughs) Forced family what? (laughs) Forced family. Family time. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> I've gotten to know my kids better. Matthew is hanging out at home with his wife, uh, Camilla Alves, and uh, their three children, 12, 10, and 7, and his 88 year old mom, Kay McGonaghy. How's she hey, doing? Kay. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> to keep things fresh, he makes sure to uh, break a sweat every day. Sure. He's, he's just such a movie star, isn't he? Well, you know, yeah. also be aware he's got a book coming out next month. So you're going to see a lot more of these, I think. He's, he's doing a little Tom Hanksy thing here, I think. I broke a sweat. I broke a sweat yesterday. I was cleaning insulation out of my garage where <laughs> ants had gotten in. You want oh, to talk ants! About Ugh. Something nasty, Ugh. nasty little ant nests. Yeah, all over Ugh. the place. Uh, he said his kids are taking the the hobbies they had before COVID and are leaning into them more. Yeah. Hey, listen. If you want to do something right, you got to lean into it. I lean lean into, into it. Into sweat yeah. every day. Michael William O'Mara <laughs> leaning into Minecraft. Lean into Minecraft every day. Don't you should that. make him uh, lean into that insulation. Yeah, lean. Oh, it was nasty. And then I sprayed it to kill the uh, bugs, and then I had to pick it out of there, and it was wet. Ah, and it was gross. I, I hate itched. me some ants, boy. It was horrible. Uh, when Kanye West campaign submitted the required signatures to get him on the presidential ballot in Wisconsin, uh, there were more than a few fishy names: Bernie Sanders, Mickey Mouse. Uh, there were even two Kanye Wests on the list. So the state Democratic Party filed a complaint alleging there were hundreds of fraudulent signatures and saying Kanye shouldn't be allowed to be on the ballot. But Kanye's lawyers came up with an interesting defense. This proves how wonderful lawyers really are. Yeah. They say his critics have to prove that Mickey, Bernie, and the other two Kanyes aren't real. There so they're just go. saying, not me, you. Yeah, you do yeah. it. Mm-hmm. You yeah, do it. Prove it. Yeah. Prove it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, lawyers. lawyers good. <laughs> NBA players have been in the bubble in Orlando for about a month, which means they're really missing their children, their significant others, and, well, you know, they're probably uh, <laughs> dealing with, uh, you know, the, the idea that they haven't 
you know. Yeah. Uh, and the NBA is, you know. Anyway, sure. no, I'm sorry. The NBA is doing something about it. Later this month, they'll start allowing players to bring guests into the bubble. Uh-oh. Oh, look out. There are strict rules, and they're clearly trying to block players from inviting Tinder randoms or hotties <laughs> they met on Instagram. Uh, the rules are non-family members must have long-standing relationships. Okay. Mm-hmm. It, this, I'm sorry. These rules sound forgeable. Mm-hmm. Uh, those without an established pre-existing personal and known relationship won't be allowed in. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she, boy, your your cousin is beautiful, <laughs> and she's back again. You know, this is your exciting cousin for that you've known all your life. Uh, <laughs> She'll so, be staying uh, in my room. They say it's a no for quote any individual the player has not previously met in person or with whom the player has had limited in person interactions, like ones known by the player only through social media or an intermediary. <laughs> oh, I love this an intermediary, <laughs> yeah, a coordinator. You know, yes, this we'll- is really great news, Mike, for Mrs. David Stern. <laughs> <laughs> Guests will be required to quarantine for seven days and yep. then take a charter flight to Orlando and then quarantine for four more days on the Disney campus. Oh, that's so nice. And I would love more reporting on that. I don't really forget would. the intermediary gets a percentage when they uh, <laughs> introduce them sometimes. <laughs> yeah, quarantine for four more days. <laughs> that's uh, all. Let's see here. Hold on just a second. <laughs> Uh, these are some quick hits regarding okay. the uh, coronavirus here. Fisher Price just released a toy set called My Home Office. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's the one where kids can uh, use it to imitate their parents working from home. It includes a phone, headset, coffee cup, and laptop, and it costs $25. <laughs> uh, we are having a Dr. Pepper shortage. Didn't we oh. have that back when Don wanted diet cherry Dr Pepper or whatever? No, it was right? he was a diet cherry Coke guy, and I believe there was diet a shortage because because he bought it all. Okay, uh, <laughs> there's a Dr Pepper shortage because of the pandemic, and people are really freaking out. Dr Pepper tweeted, "Quote: We know it's harder to find Dr Pepper these days. We're working on it. Hang tight." Charmin toilet paper responded to Dr Pepper's tweet with, "Quote: Welcome to the club. Yes. We feel your pain." So, I don't know. It's flavored water. Well, Dr. Ultimately. Pepper, mm-hmm. I found that Dr. Pepper fans are the most intense soda fans. They okay. demand it and they need it. And uh, it's it's fine, I suppose. But come on, get ahead of it. Why, are people drinking more because of the pandemic? They, I mean, I don't think that would affect soda. Well, all I know is the local grocery store, you know, we have two cans of Diet Coke. Come on. Get your act together. Not Plenty enough. of Diet Pepsi, though. Yeah, shocker there. Ugh. Plenty of Diet Pepsi. Uh, 54% of people say they don't want to handle cash or coins because of the Rona. I feel that way. Mm-hmm. I get hinky about it. I do it, but I yeah. don't like to do it. I saw. I agree. Uh, I was in the uh, drive through the other day, and two people in front of me paid with credit cards. They stuck the thing out the window, and people did. I think that's a, good, a better way to pay. Uh, I do too. And then yeah, it makes me hinky when I when I get change back. And it's and it's weird because you know what? I love cash. I love it. I love handling well, it. Solution to that: hand them the uh, the money and then tell them to keep the change. Work out what it is when they tell you what it costs if yeah, you're getting a yeah. meal in a drive through mm-hmm. line. Sure. Work out a close thing and let them, let them keep the change. I agree. Uh, a video is going viral of a healthcare worker in China who was working so hard in the heat that she squeezed a bunch of sweat out of her hazmat suit. If you wonder about frontline workers, though, and what they're dealing with with yes. those things, mm-hmm. that's a, that's heat and dealing with that every day, not to mention their fear of getting the virus. I uh, I salute and love those people. They uh, use one the sweat day- to make a batch of Dr. Pepper. That was the weird part <laughs> about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one day when the history books are written about why the U.S. was hit by coronavirus so much worse and so much longer than other countries, this will be used as an example. Okay. And this is the way it is. In this stupid country sometimes. The biker rally in Sturgis, South Dakota. Bikers. When did they flip? They probably always were like this. Mm -hmm. This week, the bikers in Sturgis were uh, so focused on belittling and denying coronavirus that one bar hosted a contest to see who could sneeze the furthest into the crowd. Oh, my God. Into the crowd? There you go. Well, this starts with the leadership, man. This starts with the mayor of the town uh, saying, yeah, they're going to come anyway. They're going to come. Yep. No, they're not. You know, they're not if you don't want them to. God almighty. Anyway, also the sheriff of Marion County, Florida, has banned his deputies from wearing masks. 
I read about this douche yesterday. His ban was issued on the same day Florida had its new single-day record for coronavirus deaths with 277 in the state I'm not going back to anytime soon, uh, including 13 in Marion County, where this sheriff is. What happened to our nation? Really, what happened to people just opening their I, I Everything has been politicized. I can't and even brainwashed, you yep. stupid bastard. Anyway, in the town of Whittier, Alaska, almost all 280 people who live there live in one building. This must be remote. Oh, that's that's nice. (laughs) And six of them just got coronavirus. So, oh, that's 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 good news for that building. So sad. Sorry to give you the bad stuff. Anyway, now a little something something. Mississippi's flag commission said a proposed. A proposed new state flag bearing the image of a giant mosquito has been removed from the shortlist and was only included due to a typo. I saw the picture. Giant mosquito on the flag. Uh, The Mississippi Department of Archives and History said the mosquito flag, a variation on the popular hospitality flag design with a giant mosquito inside a circle of stars instead of a larger star, was never meant to be one of the 100 147 designs in round two of the flag selection. They're still working on it. The flag commission is expected to choose a final design September 2nd, and voters will then decide in November if the flag will be adopted as the state's new symbol. Early design leaders continue to be... (laughs) Yes. The dunce cap, a discarded tooth, and a caricature of Larry the Cable Guy making the upside-down OK sign. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll take a break, and we will flag come back commission. with more fun. I would love to be on the flag commission. Yeah. You know, the, oh, that mosquito will not fly. Uh, we will take a break and uh, come back with the audio vault and Rob Spiewak right here on the Michael Mary Show. Welcome back to our show, brought to you by the bonus package. Well, no Rob Ford today. Today we None. feature oh. the bedrock cast of the Mike O'Mara Show. Madeline, Matthew, Robert, and me. I am Michael. Hi, Michael. Thank you. We are your flight crew today, and your final destination is fun. Oh, no. But just you wait until tomorrow when we present the TMOS bonus show, where the sky is the limit when it comes to laughter. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Here's the sitch, Mitch. For just a small handful of dimes, you get this week's show, plus Plus. full unlimited access to every bonus show of all time. No commercials, no censorship. That's right. If I say f*** now, you'll hear a bleep. Right. Uh, Just click the banner at MikeOmeraShow.com. It's waiting for you. Don't be a heel. And a subscription just might cure your recurring case of acute melancholy. It's your passport to the Asport. Asport. Copyright 2020. I'm Mike O'Mara. I guarantee it. And now back to Ed Cookie Burbs. <laughs> Burns. In seven, what? Ed Cookie Burns. Well, you wrote B Y R B E S. <laughs> Auto corrected something. This is why wrong you need then. to get out of the house. <laughs> you suppose uh, you're right. I suppose you're 77 right. 77 Sunset Strip. Another person. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with you. Let's open up uh, his audio vault. Please take it away, Rob Spiewak. Mike, I love this when we can do presto requesto on the audio vault. If you want victory in life, you need Coach Lou Holtz. For victory in life, we've got to keep focused on the goal, and the goal is heaven. The key to winning is choosing to do God's will and love others with all you've got. Sacrifice, discipline, and prayer are essential. We gain strength through God's Word. We receive grace from the sacrament. And when we fumble due to sin and it's going to happen, confession puts us back on the field. So if you haven't been going to Mass Weekly, get back in the game. We're saving your seat on the starting bench this Sunday. Welcome home. You know, one of the things I do at well, Podcast Village well, is I, I don't get a brain <laughs> bag cold, but they're. One yeah. of the things I do at Podcast Village is I take audio that people have recorded and make them sound as good as possible. And I can only imagine whoever produced that video of Coach Holt right. just went, okay, that's it. That's all we I got. Just, I just wish they had a windscreen on that microphone. It would be very, very helpful. I bet I if you did, it would end up like that video of the lady in the hazmat suit. <laughs> ringing it out. It out. Yeah, yeah, so we're all, you know, we talk Netflix. All right, we all know this sound. But yep. Netflix is looking for ultimately in the future some of their big 
uh, releases will be released theatrically. And I think you actually have to do that for Oscar consideration. It has to have at least one showing in a real theater. They were and talking uh, They were talking about uh, the, the, originally they, they might have used a goat. Some guy liked to, yeah. some board member or some muckety muck at Netflix liked a goat. They were going to yeah, use that. Yeah, it was sort of a parody of the uh, the MGM lion. But what right. they've done is they hired uh, composer Hans Zimmer to do a theatrical version of the Netflix sounder. And as a guy who likes big orchestrated stuff, I like this. So if you ever go see a Netflix movie in a movie theater, this is what you'll hear instead. Almost on the, the here's what I don't like about it. Okay, I, yeah, I love a big orchestration. You can't tell it's really the Netflix mm -hmm. sound. I, I was agree. I was looking for more of a crescendo. You where wanted we go, yeah, something like yeah. that at the end, maybe. But it is it is cool. And once again, the one thing you you even if you don't subscribe to Netflix, you have to give them this. They don't half ass anything. They really no. go over the top, and I love that. Mm -hmm. um, Al Roker had shoulder surgery. And I don't watch the Today Show anymore, and that's been a very healthy breakup for me. How yep. long do you think, after coming out of anesthesia, he went on social media to say, look at me? The answer, uh, Mike? I have no idea. I have no idea. 20 I really, minutes! I, 20, 20 minutes. minutes! And he went on Instagram. Here's Al Roker, because he just can't stand being mediocre in any format. Well, it's uh, 20 minutes past two, um, and but... I've been told by Dr. Riley Williams my surgery was a success. Now comes the hard part of doing all the physical therapy, but that won't start till Monday. Anyway, thanks for all the well wishes, and uh, see you in the funny papers. Fantastic, Al. Great Al, work as always. Al, Al uh, has some bad joints like me. I mean, Al's had uh, knees, and uh, he's had now shoulders, and mm. uh, all that, and... Uh, I, you know, I sometimes when I tell people uh, since I've been in my 20s, uh, the amount of holes that have been pun punched <laughs> in my body, I have had I have had both knees and not replacements or anything like that. But I have had surgery here, this shoulder, uh -huh. this shoulder. I have had both knees operated on and I have two hip replacements. I think when you got bad joints, you got bad joints and it doesn't help when you're a tub of lard, too. That's but, true. Uh, but I mean, I got, I had, I remember back when I was in my early 20s and I had trouble. I got thrown over a railing at a high school party and had a minor separation <laughs> on my shoulder. Well, I, I rough housed a lot. I mean, I'm I did sorry that. I played a that. lot of hockey and I got checked a lot. And I ended up uh, where I would, I would try to, I would try to throw a football and I'm trying to throw a football and it hurt. And yeah. I ended up having it scoped, and uh, it was a minor thing. And then the other one, I had that scope too. And uh, and then the knee, one knee was just a torn meniscus, and the other knee was when I had another little run-in with someone, and I blew my ACL out, and then uh, two hip replacements and laser spine surgery. I'm a human pincushion. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, but other, than, but other than that, pain. perfect health. Other than that, I'm doing fine, and my colon seems to be doing okay uh, with this fasting that I do. Nice. So I'm very oh, you, happy. Thanks, that's something, nice. Al Roker, that's something Al Roker can't say. Remember, he soiled himself at the White House nice. once. Yes, I know. Oh, that's right. He sharded. Yeah, he did. Uh, Thank you. Janine, Janine Pirro on Fox News. Whenever I see her, I can almost smell red wine on my television because yeah. she's just that way. This she is, is evil. She is so evil with what she did. This is her wish coming through her but mouth. It's so this lady, the weird. Lack of, the, yeah, but the no, it's not weird. It's not weird. This is what she's wishing for. This is her lack of filter. And by the way, as someone who sat there and watched the rollout press conference for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden yesterday and enjoyed it to the point of being moved by it, this witch. Is is evil personified? Is are you talking about when she said, "I don't know if you yeah, yeah, exactly. Make it. yeah. But before we get to the real quick, do you like me when you watch that uh that press rollout for them? It was like you were waiting for something to go wrong because it went so well, and it's not it, like the Democratic Party to pull it off so well. They did it mm -hmm. so well. The connection that she drew with her relationship with Bo Biden. Yes. Another family member tragically lost to Joe Biden. His uh, grief and his tragedy in his life has informed him as a person.
I believe this with all my heart. I really do. And I was touched by that. I was touched by the fact that they had a relationship and that might have been one of the reasons ultimately the, that he decided mm-hmm. on her. Outside of the fact that she's been in the battle and she does it. I thought it was a moving thing. But yeah. And I also, you know, I'm like everybody else with this propaganda machine coming out about Sleepy Joe and Sleepy Joe. I like Joe the way Joe gives a speech. I like I watching too. him do it. I enjoy that. So I was kind of touched by that that whole relationship that they had. And I like seeing their spouses come out on the stage. And I like the way they social distance. It's not that I hard too. to do. I can't wait for the debate. But Jean, anyway, Jean Pirro. Jeanine like Pirro. That. This is Janine. She, she was asked if at uh, 70, I believe he's 78. Is uh, Biden 78? Something, like 70, that. Yep. something mm-hmm. in that area. If that is a little too old for him to be elected president for a four year term. This is what she said on Fox News. And it's not great. For some reason, I just have this feeling that Joe Biden isn't going to be on the ticket. I have a sense that something's going to happen before the election and he's not even going to be on the ticket. So don't even ask me if he's going to make the four years. Evil lady. Evil yes, she's evil. lady. She's absolutely her politics completely dominate what uh, she feels about that. That person. And, you know, to say that, look, that we all say things uh, in our different tribes. We all say things to people that we're close to that feel the same way. We do. Come on. You of hear course. that. But publicly, in a public forum, to, to, to say something like that, it's just a, there, there's absolutely no filter on these people. They're just driven by their own propaganda machine. It sucks. You know, I, I and really, I and I and I take it back. Off. I don't think it's red wine. I think for her it might be vodka and a lot of olives. I yeah, think a no. lot of olives. Well, that for one Jenny time Pearl. that she they had the video of her where oh people my thought God, she yeah. was s faced. You know, yeah. who knows? All right. Well, you have to be sober to make a comment like that. We're going to mm-hmm. close, Mike, with a salute to Fort McCoy, Florida. Are you familiar with this city? Yeah, I think it's uh, just north of Dumville. It is. Oh, Mike, it's it's adjacent. Uh, there mm-hmm. was a guy who had uh, three DUI convictions, so. I want to applaud him for not driving his car, but he did drive his lawnmower on a highway. And this is the dash care, the, uh, the, you know, the, the cam on the chest of the cop recording right. him being it's arrested. A body cam, a right. body cam. Thank you. Right. Uh, this mm-hmm. is Fort McCoy, Florida lawnmower guy. You know, you're in the road, right? Was I? You were. How much you have to drink tonight? <laughs> uh, a couple. Uh, I think it was a little more than a couple. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Uh, are you going to take me to jail or not? No, I didn't say that. I said we're going to do some field sobriety exercises. I have been drinking. So I'm going to ask you one more time if you want to do these exercises. No, sir. You don't? Just take me to jail. All right, Paul. Go ahead and turn around and put your hands behind your back. I had to cut the tape short, but uh, he was headed to the NBA bubble. He was going to visit a longtime relative there. That's your Magic Audio Vault. Have a good Thursday, everybody. That's it. Our thanks to Colin Mockery. He is a virtual Zoom show. Streaming uh, starts tomorrow. There are a few days that they do it. You can find the link to that great improv show with uh, Colin and uh, what's his partner's name? I forgot his Brad partner. Sherwood. Brad Sherwood. Uh, Brad, Brad Sherwood. And I got to do an improv. I, I got so to do cool. Whose Line Is It Anyway with Colin. That was so Jonathan much fun. Jonathan Lama. I appreciate Jonathan Lama. <laughs> there are lots of vowels. It's hard to pronounce. Lama. <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Maddie, thanks for all your help. Thank you. Pony Boy, thanks for the recommendations of the uh, the Sherlock thing. I'll be checking that out. Absolutely. And uh, I will see you, Rob, tomorrow. We'll Rob's going to go out and experience the world today and come back with a story. Actually, uh, also tomorrow we have the return of the talking head, which will oh, be fun. Oh, that's right. The talking head coming back tomorrow. we got to get out of here. Uh, for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. It's been a good day. My God, what a good day. For mankind. Well, well, I don't get. They're very cold, but they're. Bye bye.